You know, I mean, what is this job as you see it, man? I mean, every, every president of the system, they certainly have uh, their own, uh, they put their own uh, signature on it and stuff. But you going into this, I mean, what does this mean to you? What does it mean to the, uh, the system, the state? And, uh, well, and if you look at the five campuses of the University of Massachusetts, you know, there are 75,000 students. You look at the research engine of the University of Massachusetts, uh, it's over $600 million. It's a close third, actually, to MIT, Harvard, UMass is next. So the University of Massachusetts literally is the economic engine that drives the economy of this state. So it's a great opportunity to um, try to get the university to, to the next level, uh, working with, uh, with all the campuses. It's different in the sense that, um, you know, obviously Lowell is one of five campuses. If you look at the, the size of Lowell, it's, it's, it's not, the, you know, it's the second largest campus, we've got a medical school. So it presents, I think, all kinds of opportunities uh, to get the University of Massachusetts system uh, to the next level. So uh, it means that I won't be in Lowell. Uh, obviously, uh, obviously, one of the, the advantages to the job, from my vantage point, is Lowell is one of five campuses. So it's not as if I won't have some imprint here, but it won't be a day-to-day -day imprint. Um, I will tell you that I'm very confident that um, I'm very confident the leadership team that we put in place at Lowell, uh, the success of, at, at Lowell has not been all about me. I've been the leader, um, but, uh, but we've hired really good people. Whenever we've had a search for a major position, we've had a national search, and we've got, sometimes we hire people from within the university, oftentimes we go outside, but, but I, I, I think we have a great leadership team. Uh, we have uh, the deans, as we've had uh, changes in the deans, deans have left. We've been able to, because the stature of the university has been increasing, we've been able to get higher caliber people that uh, probably would ever have been attracted to come to UMass Law. So I feel really good about, uh, about where the university is. I feel good about the fact that I will still have some uh, impact in Lowell, but obviously, you know, my, my attention is going to be focused on other campuses as well. Uh, UMass Amherst has, has been in an upward trajectory, uh, and, and I want to work with the chancellor there to see that continue to improve. There are, issue, there are a lot of issues uh, at the medical school, but it's a great institution. We collaborate with the medical school at Lowell. That's how I've gotten to really understand what the medical school does and, and the research that con that's conducted there. And so I'm really excited about it. I think it's a, it's a natural next step. I think it's an advantage to be president of the system and to come from one of the campuses. I have a fundamental understanding of, uh, of all the uh, campuses, but uh, you, know, you don't get to run a campus when you're in the president's office, and that's one of the negatives of the job. Uh, I won't be interacting on a daily basis with students and faculty, <coughs> which is a part of this job that I love the most. But, uh, but it's not like I'm joining a different university or going to a, a different system. I'll still be engaged and involved and obviously watching. Uh, what's happening in Lowell, and we have uh, we rotate our board of trustees meetings. Uh, I intend to go to all the campuses uh, uh, more often uh, to interact with faculty and students. So, uh, so, so, but, but I, I would be uh, less than honest if I didn't say that I, I'm, uh, I'm kind of emotional about the fact that I'm leaving here. It's interesting. I, I, I hadn't worked in Lowell. You know, I represented Lowell and lived in Lowell, but I. This is different, this job. This job is a, is a direct impact uh, in the city. I mean, I, I worked for a year, years ago, as the assistant to the, to the mayor, and I worked for a congressman, but I didn't, you know, I didn't really, I didn't really work every day in Lowell the way I had the last eight what years. What about the winding the teams? Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, I, uh, I, I enjoyed my time at the Lowell Sun, it actually, uh, and I am thinking about a lot of different things, but, but my time actually at this newspaper helped develop me. I always, in every job I had when I, when I was a kid, I, I sort of understood how the press worked and how just, just, it may have been rolling tapes, but A, you learn if you get the wrong tape with the wrong story, you're in big trouble. <laughs> Not just from your immediate bosses, but my father at home, if he heard about it. <laughs> but, uh, but also to be around the newsroom and um, get to understand how a newsroom works. Um, so, so I, you know, I mean, I feel as though when I came to Lowell, I said that I wanted to give something back to my alma mater because of all it had given to me, and uh, and I really, 
you know, that, that was my sense about it, that it was a good opportunity to make a difference in my hometown with the hometown university. And, um, but, I, but I don't think I imagined that there'd, been, that, that there'd be the breadth of transformation at the university that we've had. We've taken advantage of a lot of opportunities. We had the lowest interest rates in 30 years. Uh, Bill Hogan had built a great faculty and also uh, little or no debt. Um, and what an advantage it was. Um, you know, uh, Dr. Hogan could have spent money when interest rates were at his highest. We spent money and borrowed money when they were at their lowest in 30 years. Construction uh, costs were at the lowest in 30 years. So it was a great opportunity, I think. And a, just the right combination. Timing is everything. And um, so, so, you know, we've had a, uh, I, I feel as though, um, first of all, I've never, I've never enjoyed a job more than this job, honestly. I, I, it, I've, I've gotten more satisfaction than any job I've ever had. I, I've had a lot of different jobs. Um, and as Ken mentioned, I roll tapes here. I, was, I used to work on Sundays and nobody was in the building. But everyone, you had to, you had to, uh, you had to press a button to get into the building. So it was pretty private, but the only person... Sometimes you get a shot pressing the button. No. <laughs> but I'll tell you, one guy he didn't have to press it was Carmen Costello. He just showed up. <laughs> I think the most significant thing is the fact that we came up with a strategic plan that came from the faculty, from students, alumni, the deans. Jackie headed the, uh, that up with, with our med, and everybody bought into, okay, these are the things that we want to accomplish, and everything that you just mentioned was part of that strategic plan. So, um, you know, I, I mean, if you would ask me what I personally feel uh, the most uh, gratified about as I'm leaving, the increase of 115% in diversity at the university. I, I remember when I got to the university, I, I said to one of the vice chancellors, I said, uh, what's with this campus? It, it, it feels like... It's all white? Yeah. I said, it's all white. And she said to me, well, uh, we primarily service the Merrimack Valley. The Merrimack Valley is pretty much all white. I said, no, it isn't. Lawrence is 90% Hispanic. Lowell is the second largest influx of uh, Cambodian Americans Second, the, L the LA area. That's just not true, and I believe that the, I, I believe that the strength of diversity, and and I think that's the thing that I'm most proud of. And there are a lot of lessons, small lessons that uh, that I've been able to uh, get across to people about the importance of diversity. What what are the, statist the statistics now with diversity? Can you, can you round us? We're up 115 percent in terms of the number of new students that we've admitted yeah. from diverse backgrounds. The overall diversity of the university was about 18%, mm -hmm. and I think now it's, what, 30? Yeah, yeah, it's about So that means? Percentage, percentage okay. of the body. But, but let me tell you what's interesting about that. The and that's with 50% growth. <coughs> I mean, we've grown enrollment by 50%. Yeah. Uh, not only that, you know, I often hear at times here university presidents say uh, that they would increase their diversity, but they really have high SAT scores, and it's difficult to do. Well, we, we've done it. We have increased our average SAT score after this class is admitted by 100 points. If it was 80, it's probably going to be 100, or close to 100. At the same time, we've increased our diversity. And as I said to the folks uh, in admissions, you know, a really sharp Latino, Latina kid from Lawrence, you know, we're losing them to UNH, to UMass Amherst, to other places when we need to be aggressive about it. Lowell High School, if you look at Lowell High School, the, the, I mean, the power of the diversity at Lowell High School and the quality of the students, we weren't getting enough of them. So, we, so there were six county medalists every year. We got four of them this year. Oh, really? That's a big deal. That is a very, very big deal. Um, and, and, and I think that I think it's the first time that we ever got that many county medalists. That's the top, uh, for those of you who don't know, and I know Ken knows, but it's the top three. Where are the other two going to, you know? Uh, One's Holy Cross. One's yeah. Holy Cross, yeah. I, I really believe that no matter what a university does or what an organization does, they need to strive for excellence <coughs> in that. I said, for example, if you're going to have a hockey team and play in Hockey East, the most prestigious collegiate hockey league in the country, then you want to compete. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, I know you guys have been, you guys have been uh, beating us up pretty good. I said, no, everyone has. <laughs> and he said, ooh. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I think... I think it's up to the campus to decide what they, you know, I'm not going to get involved in micromanaging, but I think for football they need a conference. 
and uh, they have an idea of a conference that they'd like to play in, and I, I know people all over the country, and, uh, and, and, and I'm going to help them get into the conference if they want. What's and, the conference that they want? See, I don't want, I, I, I can't really get it. How long is the commitment to uh, Foxborough? Uh, Four it's, years. Yeah, it's, it, it's open. Okay. They can cut that down. They don't need to play, you know, probably a better idea is to play certain games. Yeah. They played BC, there were 30,000 right. people. I, I think having 30,000 fans is good. They played UNH at, uh, at Gillette a few years ago, and, and they had 30,000 at that uh, at that game. So I think it depends upon scheduling, the league you're in. Uh, you know, this, but, but, but I don't view it as a president's job necessarily to micromanage, but um, I'll get engaged. You know, I'll get engaged. That represents it. There's a lot of differences on the, uh, on the campus, um, and I've talked with the chancellor about it. I'm going to be as helpful as I can with uh, with everything that they're doing at Amherst, and um, and uh, Amherst is a place that is I mean, the research and it's a fabulous place, mm -hmm. fabulous place. So I need to do everything I can to be supportive of of, uh, of their efforts, including getting intimately involved with in things. They play uh, they play football at uh, Notre Dame this year, and uh, so the chancellor of there said to me, we're going to have a lot of alums that are going out, you know, can you come out? And uh, I went out to uh, Notre Dame, where our hockey team played out there, but we have a, a, a huge group of uh, UMass Amherst alums going out there, so I'll be going out and I'll be, you know, it's my job to be the leader of the institution and to, to help wherever I, however I can, even if even me finding a conference. Notre Dame's favored by 35. <laughs> <laughs> Only 35? Yeah, I don't <laughs> I think that could widen. <laughs> I, did, I did talk to the football coach uh, at this same, uh, it was a going away class football, correct? I didn't give any plays, but. Uh, <laughs> you gave a, a speech, huh? That correct party? Yeah. yeah. What's the process on your success? <laughs> um, <clears throat> The faculty senate voted uh, unanimously for an expedited search, um, but having an expedited search is, uh, you know, it's challenging because the board of trustees needed, they need to have a vote, and uh, we, they couldn't get a quorum for the last committee meeting, so <laughs> we have an idea what the search committee is going to be, and uh, who's going to chair it. They're going to vote for them on the on the 17th, and then there's going to be a meeting on campus, in all likelihood, on the 18th. And uh, there will be meetings the week after that, public meetings. I've talked to folks at the Lowell Plan about the need to, to, for the community to get engaged in the in the search process. I'm hoping that we could have a new uh, a new chancellor selected uh, by September, and I think that we could do that. Um, people who have heard me talk on campus or certainly trustees and alumni. I, I've long believed that too often university presidents come from outside the institution. And that happens, frankly, about 78% of the time. And you don't see that in companies because companies invest in people and they bring them along and, and eventually the CEO is somebody who, you know, has been working at the company sometimes their whole lives and there are investments that are made. So I think that we can have a process that results in somebody who's at the institution, at a, you know, it's my job not to speculate other than to say that I think that uh, company. I feel good, <laughs> I feel good about the leadership of the institution and I, I believe that we can have a chance to select it. But you need to, you need to talk to the faculty, you need to talk to the, uh, to the alumni, you need to talk to the community, so we will have a process. It will be intense over a period of time, but, uh, but I think that we can get it done so that we have a new chance in place by September. Um, and it, I will tell you that it's very important to me that we keep the momentum going. Um, and, and we have a lot on our plate. Um, there are a lot of things that are, you know, I mentioned the construction of the, of, the, uh, of the business school, but we have a lot of things we're working on because, I mean, that's how we've accomplished so much in so little time, really. So I don't want to, I don't want to miss a beat. And, and I don't, and I hear Ken, I talk to people like you, leaders in the community all the time that say, look, we don't want to, you know, we understand why you're going to do this, but we want this to continue. And so I, th I think the community has a stake <coughs> in this search and a stake in, um, in making sure in, that the university continues to play the role that it's played over the last eight years. So um, I'm not in, it's, it's, it's a funny period of time because 
I'm not president yet, yet I'm trying to get things moving along. Um, so, uh, you know, I, 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 but I'm hopeful that we can get it done by, by September.